One of the most effective changes you can make to your RC car is the hub height, but it's one of those things that not many people actually mess with. It's something that's kind of quite new. We've been racing for around 15 years now, most weekends, and I can only really remember having sort of hub height adjustments that you can really mess with in the last sort of five years, something like that, five, six years. I think cars obviously in the past have always had multiple holes you can sort of put your hinge pin in, but now we've got all these hub height inserts, the multiple top hats in the front, and the adjustments have really been unlocked to a much finer detail that gives us much more tuning options to mess with. An important point to understand is that when you're changing your hub height, your hub height doesn't actually change. At the end of the day, your hub's bolted to your wheel and your wheel is touching the floor, so how could your hub move up or down? What's actually changing is where the position of the end of your wishbone is. And depending on how the hub is sort of built, whether the link on the outside moves up or down as well. So for a second, if we look at the front of the car, we can see we've got the top hat bushings in the hub in there. And what happens when you flip those top hat bushings around and move the hub height up or down is you actually just move the C hub part up and down and that moves the outside of your link and the outside of your arm up or down. So that's the real effect we're talking about here. We're effectively moving the suspension into more compression. Everything is angled more upwards. And what effect is that going to have? The first thing that this affects is roll centers. And it's a good thing to remember really that any time you're adjusting the angle of an arm or a link, you're probably gonna be affecting the roll centers in some way. Now, if you really wanna learn in depth about the roll centers, I have done videos about it before. They're gonna be linked above and probably in the description. But really what we need to know for this video here is that we are lifting the arms at the outside and the link at the outside. It's gonna be angled more downwards in the middle and more upwards towards the outside. And what that does is lower the roll center. And a lower roll center on its own is gonna make the front end of your car slightly less responsive. More of the force goes through the tires and into the suspension movement rather than directly back into the track, directly into the wishbones and links. It allows the suspension to move more. So when you turn in, your car's gonna dive down a little bit more, move more, not respond as quickly, but maybe turn slightly more in the mid corner and exit on its own. The second part to it is the force in your arm and link. When you're in a corner, your tires have a force at the bottom of them, which allows you to go around the corner. And that force being pushed in at the bottom of your tire pushes on the bottom arm, tries to compress the wishbone, and it tries to extend the camber link, tries to pull it apart. That stops the tire from effectively flopping over in the corner. And when you affect the distance between the bottom of the tire and this arm and this link, you're gonna increase or decrease those forces. So the way it works is that if you lower your hub, again, your hub actually stays in the same place. And what that does is it raises the lower arm on the outside and raises the link. Those two points are now further away from the bottom of the tire. Since there's now more distance between the force at the bottom of the tire and the arm and the link, more force is created in those two components. So, again, if you lower your hub, you're gonna get more force in your arm and your link, and if you raise your hub, you're gonna get less force in your arm and your link. Why is that important? Well, these cars have friction in them, obviously. These arms, all these joints, the hinge pins, They've all got an element of friction that binds them up when they get a load on them. And the more load that you get, the more bind in the suspension that you're gonna get. It's gonna actually make the suspension slightly stiffer in that way. And what feeling does that have on track on its own? Well, that usually, when you make the suspension stiffer, usually the car becomes a little bit more reactive, a little bit more precise, kind of bounces off things a little bit more. Feels like it has more initial response to everything that you do. And the overall feeling on the track that changing your hub height does is kind of a combination of those two things. So let's imagine that we lower the front hub height now. What can we expect? We lower the front hub height. When we initially turn in, we're gonna get a little bit more response and feeling from the car. That's because as I spoke about, the suspension is a little bit more bound up. 
and you get that stiffness, that geometrical stiffness that gives you a little bit more initial sort of reaction into the corner. When you get to the mid corner, this is where you're really going to notice more of the difference as well. Your car is going to dive down a little bit more because you've got that lower roll center. It's going to dive down a little bit more, but still support itself quite well due to the extra bind in the suspension as well. And that's where you're really going to notice that sort of extra turn in the middle of the corner where the front of your car goes lower. You get less weight transfer at the front because the front of the car is lower. And yeah, the car just pivots quite a lot better in the corner when you lower the front hub. Now, the downside to this could be if you're trying to go through sort of a more open corner, more sweeping corner, you might find that that dive at the front sort of hurts a bit of your corner speed. You don't carry the corner speed with the car as flat. You might have the front almost feeling like it's collapsing. And a good way to fix the front end collapsing is actually to raise the hub height. Like I just said, if you're trying to carry some speed and it feels like the car's getting over the front a bit too much, raising the front hub height is a good way to combat that. Keeps the front end a little bit more in the air, a little bit less grab in the middle of the corner. And I think that's really the main thing that I would say you can tune with the front hub height. A good way to think of it is sort of how much grab the front of the car has in the middle of a corner is the main effect. Again, the initial steering is a little bit of a difference, but it's really how much your car dives and grabs in the middle of the corner. Moving on to the rear hub, let's do the same thing with what happens when you lower the hub at all the phases of the corner. So lower rear hub going into the corner, the rear end is going to feel like it stays at a lower ride height as you turn in. It's not going to lift up as much. It will stay sort of lower down and set more into the corner. That can be a positive or a negative. If you have too much of that, it can feel like the back sort of just rolls too much, collapses, and then you just lose traction as you turn in. Like there's sort of no initial traction and support from the rear. If the hub is too high and you don't have enough of that lowering, the back kind of just stays or even goes up really high when you turn in that can make the front end collapse the car kind of loses corner speed it all happens at the front and you sort of feel like you're three wheeling into the corner actually if your back wheel is lifting off the ground coming into the corner this is one of those changes that may help is lowering the rear hub to lower that roll center and make the back sit in more as you turn into the corner middle of the corner a lower hub the car is going to rotate less and in the middle of the corner that's where you really notice the sort of extra grip or less grip from having a higher or lower hub that's because with the lower hub the ride height is going to stay lower again because of the lower roll center you've got less load transfer at the back and you're overall going to generate more rear traction coming out of the corner i know i don't really think there's a huge difference occasionally i've raised my hub and it's felt like the car drives straighter coming out of the corners perhaps but maybe that's because it's rotating more in the corner it makes it feel like it straightens up more i'm not really sure i wouldn't say that's a massive effect the, the big overbearing factor with the rear hub is how high the car sort of rolls coming into the corner and how much rotation you have in the middle of the corner so to summarize the lower hub the rear end is going to sit down more into the corner and you're going to have more rear traction in the middle of the corner the higher hub, the rear end will kind of stand up more into the corner. And in the middle of the corner, your car will rotate more. Something that's relevant to the hub height that you're running is the ride height that you're at. If you think about it, when you're changing the ride height, you're also changing the angle of the arms and the links in the same way as if you're raising or lowering the hub height. Now, this isn't, this isn't an exact thing where you want to keep the angle of the arms and links the same no matter what ride height you're at. It doesn't work like that because what is actually very important with cars is the distance between the center of gravity where the center of all the cars weight is and the roll center and you actually want to keep that distance relatively similar as you sort of lower or raise the car so the fact that the roll center gets slightly lower as the car lowers isn't necessarily a bad thing but you do want to keep it in check so usually when you're on carpet, you're running sort of 12 mil, 13 mil ride height, something like that. You will be on the higher hub heights, especially at the rear. It's important where you'll be sort of on the higher hub height, sort of plus, plus two or plus three, probably on the HRC hubs on the B7. On the front, sometimes on carpet, you're really searching for that more mid-corner steering. So 
although you may be slightly higher than you are, sort of outdoors or on dirt, it might not be as big of a difference as you think, because you might be really hunting for that mid-corner steering anyway. But that is something to something to think about. When you're running the lower ride heights, you probably want to be in the more high ranges of the hub heights, get the HRC hubs on the rear, and maybe don't be all the way down on the front. And when you're sort of running the higher ride heights and you're on sort of lower traction, that might be when you want to lower the hubs down um, at both ends, uh, just to keep the arm angle sort of helping the ride height that you're at. If you want to learn more about roll centers and what changes affect them, watch this video here on sort of the deep dive into roll centers, or you can have a look at the two valuable camber link changes that also have a big effect on roll center and actually the link and arm force like I mentioned in this video. That's it for this one though. Hopefully you've enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one.